Today is the release date of a brand new seasonal game mode, the Trailblazer League, a two month league where you play as an Iron Man with boosted XP rates while only having access to certain areas of the map. You unlock different relics along the way which help make things easier or speeds things up. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a PKer. My game knowledge is pretty lacking and I didn't play the last league. However, due to DMM, I love competing on fresh servers and think with the strategy I have I'll be able to unlock the end level content quickly and produce some great videos for you guys. Let's get into it. My game plan going into this league is to get you guys the best high level content possible as fast as possible. I want to do God Wars Dungeon, Inferno, and most importantly TOB, and I think it'll be really refreshing for you guys to see a PKer's perspective on the league. My order of unlocks is going to be Kandarin, Asgarnia, and finally Mauritania, and as for the relics I'm choosing, I've decided on Last Recall for Tier 2 and Fluid Strikes for Tier 3, and I'll tell you guys a little bit more about that later on in the video. If we manage to make it to Tier 4 today, we'll have to do some thinking then. Okay, so I'm currently editing this video and I just realized that I didn't go over arguably the most important decision of the video, my tier 1 relic. I decided to choose Endless Harvest. This allows resources I get from fishing, woodcutting, or mining to go directly to my bank instead of my inventory, as well as the amount of resources I actually get being doubled by this relic. I chose this simply because of the benefits it has to AFK playing, as while I edit my videos I still be able to get loads of progress done while AFK endless harvesting, and it just gets me loads of resources in the long run, which is going to help me out in that late game content. So while a lot of people were focusing on making money or trying to get their overall stats really high, the only two things I was focused on were completing tasks and getting a high number of points, as for every task I do I get closer to a range and unlock, and for all the points I get I get closer to another relic unlock, and obviously these just make the game so much easier, so I wasn't concerned about anything about, like that, I was just going for straight tasks. Come on Orlando Smith, give me my 20. Let's go! Okay, and let's open up Marlo's crate. That is so much good stuff for us as a teleport to house, foul or telly, all this shit. So I actually had a pretty amazing start to the league. In order to unlock your first relic, you need 500 toss points, and I managed to get that within the first two and a half hours, which means I got to unlock Last Recall within the first three hours of the game mode being live. So while I was focused on getting as many tasks as possible and getting as many points as possible, I was also thinking long term and trying to integrate the tasks into my game plan. I went to Tree Spirits to try and get myself a rune axe early as a lot of the tasks revolve around woodcutting, fletching, and fire making and it just would have sped things up by so much. I used the daddy's home rewards to start training my construction and I got to Karamja as quickly as possible to fish and cook myself food, as well as fishing and cooking just being tasks themselves. So as you guys can see, simple tasks like catching a salmon on Karamja was worth 50 points and catching 50 salmon in general was also worth 50 points and that's two tasks completed right there, very quick and easy and with my relic Endless Harvest it does really go well. So just like the salmon I also got loads of points for fishing lobsters, catching 100 lobsters was a medium task worth 50 points and cooking another 100 lobsters was also another medium task worth 50 points. So about 5 hours into the release and I managed to get my 60th task complete which was actually as simple as catching a raw herring. Now this means I could unlock my first region and as I said before my first region unlock was going to be Kandarin. If you guys are wondering why, I think it's just simply too strong in terms of the content it has as well as the points available. It has Zenites, it has the Kraken, it even has like stuff like Dragon Full Helms, Occult Necklaces, Heavy Ballistas. There's just so much to do in Kander and it's such a big place, obviously it gives you piety as well, and it's definitely the first best unlock in my opinion. Alright, Vampire Slayer done, that put me to 40 attack. So every achievement diary you can play on RS you actually get some XP lamps from, and I didn't really have a good way of training Herblore early, and the XP lamps are also boosted by the XP multi multipliers of Trailblazers, so I decided to use every single XP lamp I got early on Herblore so that when the time came I could actually use Herblore and make myself prayer pots, etc. So while some quests aren't tossed, the fact that the reward XP is actually times by the XP multiplier of Trailblazer League, which is quite different to DMM, it still makes questing very worth doing. Something like 12k attack XP is actually like 60k attack XP, and as you can see that just got me loads of levels, so quests like Fight Arena we're still going to end up doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, well I got my already cloak, her blur. Nice. 41 Herblore. Jesus Christ, Sea Slug got me to 59 fishing. Okay, and this should be Waterfall done. I'm not exactly sure what levels this gets us. 58 attack and 50 strength. That's very, very nice. Do 
Dude, I got a Cesar kit on. What? Is that a task? Oh, I need a strength level 50. Dude, that's a hard task as well to equip it for 60 strength. I've got it now. Other easy tasks that were worth 50 points were such were things such as cutting a canoe for 50 points or making a super compost, which I've never done in my life before for the record for 50 points. So a bunch of my points just randomly came in, so I can actually get my third relic now, which is Fluid Strikes. So Fluid Strikes make the attack speed of all melee weapons halved. My melee attacks have 25% increased accuracy, and I also take 15% less damage from all sources, as well as regenerating health at 4 HP per 1 minute. Let's go. So the best way I can display the attack speed of this relic is showing you guys in action in a very, very heated crash war here at the Wizard's Tower. Me and this guy in the short bow were both competing for the Wizards as we both wanted with a Wizard Rope Top for a task that we needed it for. Obviously because we're both Iron Man, none of us weren't getting the drop. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. It was a very immature crash war. But the point is, a Rune Axe is a 5 tick weapon, but as you can see it's attacking extremely fast here and that's because the attack speed is doubled. Now. It's not that, you know, it's not that glamorous when I'm showing it to you guys on a wizard. But imagine two weeks from now when I'm doing bandos and I am hitting with a whip every two ticks. This at the same speed of darts, I'll be using a whip, hitting constant 40s. That shit's gonna be OP. Okay, I just filled a bucket with super compost. Let's go. Okay, okay, enter a cook skill, 50 more points. So while it doesn't look like I'm actually that far ahead as I'm running around with 5k in my inventory in dirt poor gear, the progress I've made on the tasks and the relics is actually going to boost me so much more forward when the proper content starts happening, when I start getting into the PVM, I'm going to be ahead of people with some relics that can really help me out. Kill dark wizards, get a water talisman, mine pure essence, that's two tasks if you uh, create. 50 water runes. Okay. I need f three more tasks, bruh. It's heating up. All right, we have three tasks left. Killing a blue dragon itself is one task, I think. Yup, and I'm gonna bury the dragon bone here, which should be another one if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is, and we only have one task left now until our final area, or until our second area. Final hit, final hit. Okay, and that should be 30 range, which means I can put on the maple shortbow, which is my final task before unlocking my next region. Wait, has it updated? Has it updated? There you go. You can unlock a new area. Areas, Asgarnia, unlock, and we have unlocked both Kandarin and Asgarnia in one episode. We're probably about 12 and a half hours into the league right now. So we are about 12 hours into the league and I've unlocked both Kandarin and Asgarnia as well as getting up to the tier three relic. If you guys have enjoyed, please make sure to subscribe so you guys don't miss the future league video and feel free to toss a like as it really does go a long way in helping me out. You guys know me, I'm a PKer and I haven't really done anything like this before. So I wanna give a big shout out to my friend Maz who I've been playing this league with. He's been helping me out loads and he was actually ranked in the top 10 last league. So if you wanna check out his videos for this league, his channel is linked in the description. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed and I will see you guys tomorrow with my day two video.